Hello everybody, I am Just Lance and I would like to thank all of you for joining me for this video. Anyways, um, this is a type of video that I've never done before, but I wanted to do it since I started my channel. And it is the seven sins of wet shaving. So this video is going to be my seven sins. Um, real quick, over on Facebook's Shave the Man page, uh, there is a contest going on. I'm not going to include links to the, uh, the post. Um, when I tried going following the links, for whatever reason, my computer told me that, you know, for whatever reason, um, they were a no-go. So, the rules are you have to tag three fellow wet shavers and you also have to go ahead and um, do it between the 15th of October and the 31st. The day of the 31st, sometime I imagine before, you know, maybe as late as midnight, whenever, they're going to go ahead, it's going to end. There are artisans who are donating products for this contest and Ken Surfs himself has donated, I believe it's his pearl razor and some other products. So if you're a fellow YouTube wet shaver, um, go ahead and maybe if you know anything about this contest, a link, a proper link to get to the page, hey, hit me up in the comments let me know, give me the link, I really, really appreciate it. Um, if I win something, then great, wonderful, I could always use something new in the den. Um, but if I don't, no big deal. I'm just going to have fun doing this. So anyways, I'll tag the three at the end of the video, like I said. Anyways, so let's move on to the seven sins, my seven sins of what you mean. Um... The first sin which everybody has to go uh, with the same sins. So the first sin is greed, which is your most expensive and least expensive item in your shaved in. Um, disclaimer, not all of my items in my shaved in were bought by me. Some of them were gifts from my girlfriend. Some of them were piffs. Some of them I won in giveaways, what, what, whatever. Um, and this first item is one that I was so lucky in winning. My girlfriend nominated me over on a, in a giveaway um, through Scott Austin Miller's Clean Shaver page. And it is this one. This is the Rockwell 6S Stainless Steel Safety Razor. It's 100 bucks over on uh, Rockwell's website. You can also get it, I believe, for the same price over on Maggart's. Um, I'm not a big fan of setting one, but two through six is great. I prefer five and six. Um, no matter what setting it's on, you get a smooth shave. Um, I can use a myriad of blades in it and not have any issues. And a hundred bucks for a stainless steel safety razor that basically you can set it to six different um, levels of aggression. That's great. So that's my most expensive item. My least expensive item in my day. And I could have went with something such as my Colonel Kong stick to pencil, which is like three something, my buck and a quarter, whatever it runs, less than two bucks, a little more than two bucks, for my um, Dollar General Witch Hazel. Pardon me for the reach, guys. Uh, the Witch Hazel, but you know, I figured you guys want to see gear. So, my least expensive, and this is an item that I paid cash for, and that is this. 1973, and you're looking at it thinking, oh, it's a Gillette Fat Handle Tech. And there's a blade in it for a good reason, because this is a 73, I believe it's first quarter. Let me turn it up. For those of you who realize why the bottom of the handle is open, you're like, ooh, 
But this is the 1973 first quarter, or third quarter, I can't remember, Gillette Psychotech. It did not come with a key, of course. And I paid five bucks for it. Yeah, um, it was at one of those places in Riverside where people take in a bunch of antiques and stuff and they mark a price on them and they say sell this and the place sells them for them and they take their cut and then the seller gets the rest. But yeah, five bucks told the lady behind the counter what it was and she's all, he didn't know what he had, did he? Or the seller didn't know what, what they had, did they? I'm like, no. So um, when I saw it, realized what it was, I was like, Psychotech for five bucks? Hell yeah. That's my least expensive. The second sin is wrath. What item in your den do you love yet hate? And that's simple for me. It's this little fella right here. This is the 1950s Schick Eversharp Type G Injector. I love this razor because it gives a wonderful shave. It's smooth. I rarely have any irritation when it's done. Um, it's not the most aggressive, but three pass shave, I'm good. I absolutely hate this razor because of this little stirrup piece. This little stirrup piece. Sorry guys if I keep reaching for the uh, camera. I just want to make sure I'm in focus. I mean in, in frame. This little stirrup piece right here. I hate it because in order to clean it, I'm one of those shavers that like to clean up their razor after they're done. And you have to pop this aside, and then this part, which would be your base plate on your traditional double edge, falls falls open. And you can get a toothbrush up in there and clean up. And it cleans up real nice because it's an aluminum head. But that little stirrup piece absolutely sucks. And if I could have, could for whatever reason, go back in time... And I was able to tell them there at Eversharp, I would tell them, I would say, do not put the stirrup, it sucks. But anyways, so that's my wrath. The third sin is gluttony, which is your most delicious product or products and why. And you can do up to three, and they're all soaps. I didn't go with razors because, you know, I mean, face it, once you smelt one razor... Pardon me. Once you smelt one razor, you smelled them all. Um, so I went with three soaps. First one is this K Shave Works Hump Day. Uh, this this soap that the scents the scent notes are bright orange grapefruit. Pineapple, vanilla, cassock, whatever that may be. Um, I'm not sober, so I don't know. Um, but, I mean, i got to get one more, guys. I fell in love with this scent the first time I used it, and that was just using a sample. And I went ahead, had a chance to buy a soap off K Shave Works, and I didn't even care what else they had up there. It had to be hump day. I love that scent. I love I love oranges. I like the smell better than I do the taste. I mean, don't get me wrong, oranges taste great, but the smell, something about the smell of an orange. The second one is this. Um, Captain's Choice, 45th Parallel. Oh, it's a beautiful, beautiful cherry almond scent. And I love cherries. I love the smell of cherries. I love the taste of cherries. I love a good cherry pie. And to me, my girlfriend and I both agree, this soap smells like a good cherry pie. She thinks cherry pie with whipped cream. I just think cherry pie. But if Hump Day and, and 45th Parallel were desserts, my girlfriend and I would have long ago been at them with spoons. And the third and final soap is I went ahead and Nick Searles over on Searle Shaves was having a contest for his 250th subscriber giveaway. He had a soap with the matching body bar. It was a limited release. And this soap you cannot get anywhere but the UK. And it is this. This is Wickham's 1812 Blah Blah. 
beautiful scent. I mean, I wouldn't eat it, but I would sure, I, I just love the smell of it. It smells great. And um, I really, really like it. It's one of my top scents. And my girlfriend was driving, when one night she was driving for Uber, and a guy got in the thing in the van, and she was like, hmm, that smells good. What are you wearing? And he's all, I'm wearing Le Bleu by Chanel for men. And she's like, oh, honey, you got to get it. So I'm going to check that out one of these times. But that's my gluttony. The next is sloth. What product do you ignore because of laziness? And that's pretty simple, too. It's this one. That there. In case you don't know, that's the Gillette Milady, um, 1920s Gillette Milady. I believe it might be a decollete. Um, it's a woman's razor, but all it really is is just a man's head, um, razor head, uh, open comb, old type razor head, put on this handle. Uh, this handle, it's too short for me. I don't like really, really short handles. I mean, it gives great shaves. Um, I've used it before. It gives really nice shaves. However, when I sit there and think, oh, I want my razor to give me this kind of shave, I don't think of grabbing it and slapping it onto a razor head. Oh, there goes somebody outside with an annoying sound in their car. Anyways, I don't think about going ahead and, and slapping it onto a razor handle. I just don't. I just go, oh, I want this type of shave. Reach in, grab the razor that fits that profile, and go. But that's my sloth. The next sin is pride. What item or items are you most proud of? First of all, I'm proud of everything in my shaved in that I own. Some more than others. But if I had to pick the three things I was most proud of, it would all, they would all be razors. Um, the first two I got because I let all my friends and family on Facebook know that I was a traditional wet shaver. And that, I, and I explained what that was. And I said, if you have anything that uh, you just have in boxes, whatever, um, maybe a family member that's no longer with us and you have no idea what to do with it, um, I'd be willing to pay something for it and pay shipping. I got two people that went ahead and said, hey, I got something for you. And one was the aunt of an ex-girlfriend of mine. And it was this, her stepdad's 1960 second quarter F2 Gillette flare tip super speed um, him and I we were friends um, I respected the man a lot he always accepted me for who I was and what I was um, you know in which he you know knew I was a decent person and he always accepted me as such um, he fought the Nazis during World War II and I think two or three theaters of action, I can't remember which. He was a boxer. I don't know if he ever rose out of the amateur league, if he went, you know, the amateur ranks and into professional boxing. From what the family told me at one time, he went ahead and his, his, they had a picture of him at Knott's Berry Farm. I guess I've never been to Knott's. But at Knott's Berry Farm, there's like a boxing hall of fame and he's in it. His name's David Stamm. But he was just genuinely a good person, and I was proud to call him my friend. And to this day, I still think about him once in a while and miss him a little bit. But that's one. The second one is my girlfriend's friend, one of her friends, who sometimes they act more like sisters than friends. Um, they are close for various reasons. Um, and she gave my girlfriend this. This was her granddad or great granddad's 1912 um, Ever Ready flip top shovel head. She said, told my girlfriend, give this to Lance. My son will not appreciate it. He will not take care of it. He'll probably end up losing it or something. Just the only stipulations I have is Lance can never get rid of it and it has to go to Michael, which is my son. It has to go to Michael when Lance is gone. And my girlfriend said, all right, she told me, I'm like, no problem. So I'm very touched and honored to find, to have both of those women put that much trust in me to give me razors that has that much sentimental attachment to them. 
The third one is this. My 1959 second core, or E2, Gillette 195 adjustable, or what us in the wet shaving world has lovingly come to know as the fat boy. Story behind that, I paid 40 bucks from it, and the guy that sold it to me even sent it into Razor Emporium, paid 20 bucks, and had them do a tune-up on it, because he didn't want to go ahead and take an adjustable razor with bad uh, blade, ex you know, bad, bad blade exposure, and start shaving with it, so he made sure, had them make sure it was all up to snuff, so to speak, and he sold it to me for 40 bucks, that included shipping, and it's just an absolutely wonderful razor, one of my favorites, and uh, I've been wanting one ever since I saw a video by Geo Fatboy talking about the, the, the Fatboy, and a friend of mine, I almost got one years ago, my friend was going to give me his dad's razor, which was a fat boy, but his mom flipped out and said, nope, that, that needs to go to you or your brother, because my friend's dad was like a second father to me. And um, I was like, it's cool, dude, it's cool. And I'm glad that, it, that his mom flipped out, because I wouldn't still have it probably. I probably would have lost it or it would have gotten stolen because I started around with the wrong crowd when I was younger and you know my friend I was talking to him one day and I said hey that fat boy of your dad's does it have a red or a black black arrow you know to, to let you know where what setting it's on or is it a red dot and he said you know I think it might be a red dot so yeah my friend's got a red dot fat boy so that's my pride those three razors all right, the next sin is lust. What one item do I lust after? You know, I lust after a lot of items when it comes to this hobby. I mean, anybody, they see items and they're like, yeah. I mean, I love vintage razors. I go on Razor Emporium and it's like, ooh, you know. But the one item I lust after the most is a toggle. Hands down, toggle. Um, you know, if we were talking brushes, maybe a, a, a Pantaray or a um, Paladin. Um, I'd really love to get a Savaro 3824 or maybe a Clark, Nathan Clark or a Wolf Whiskers. But things that I truly lust after the most, if you put all those things that I've seen that I've been like, I want that on a table, I would pick up the toggle and walk away and say thanks. If you said you can only pick up one, I'd grab the toggle and walk away. That's how bad I want one. So that's my lust. The final sin is envy. What person in the wet shaving community do you envy the most? I mean, there's lots of good guys. Nick Shaves, Shave Busta, Chris Bailey, um, Paul H., Ken Surfs. But I would say the one guy I, if, if I envy anybody, simple, Matt Pesarsic of Razor Emporium. Uh, it's not for who he knows, that's for what he does. I mean, Matt, I envy you. You work around awesome pieces of shave gear every day, vintage razors all day long, revamp vintage brushes, you know, get, get vintage straight edge razors back, back into shape for, you know, uh, a guy who says, this was my granddad's or great granddad's or father's straight, I want it fixed. Um, you do it all. If I had 20-20 vision, that's the job I'd want. I mean, not to mention his luck with razors. He posted the other day on Facebook, he ended up digging through a box that he had gotten some time ago on uh, Etsy. He never, you know, I can't remember how old he said, several years, I think, but... He finds in, he posts, he's all, hey, look, guys, I found a toggle. <laughs> it's like a freaking toggle. Um, so, yeah, he, that's the guy I envy. So, anyways, that's my seven cents. Now let's move on to the tags. First tag, of course, I'm going to tag the guy that I envy. Matt, I've seen videos where you showed your toggle. Um, you know, you've went ahead and you've showed... Um, you showed your, your um, Regency Tech, which to your knowledge is the app and just happens to be the only Regency Tech known of, which still has the case. 
Um, you got some awesome stuff. I want to see your seven sins. So tag, you're it. The second tag is, um, well, you either like them or you don't. Um, he might be the most one of the most polarizing characters in uh, all of wet shaping, and that is Christopher David Bailey. I don't always agree with him, but I respect him. I respect his opinion. Um, he gave me some words of wisdom. I emailed him. He gave me some words of wisdom before I started this channel. And he was one of the first YouTubers I watched. And I still to this day watch him. Um, so, yeah, Chris, I know that you did a Seven Sins of Wet Shaving when you were eye lather. But you are no longer eye lather. You are just yourself. You're, uh, you know, your, your channel is just now IMCDB. So, I want to see what your Seven Sins are. Because your den has been updated. I do know that since that last Seven Sins video. So I want to see what it is. And the third and final tag is Nick Searles of Searle Shaves. Him and I are friends on Facebook. I got the blue from him. Him and I were not buddy buddy. But, you know, we communicated back and forth a couple of times on Facebook. Um, he seems like a genuinely cool dude. Um, when, when you watch his videos. So, yeah, Nick, I want to see what you got going over there, going on over there in the UK. Um, you're not as big as Matt or Chris, but, you know, you're bigger than me. So, I want to see what you got going on. Anyways, folks, that's been my seven cents of wet shaving video. I have tagged those who I want to tag. I have showed you my sins. Um, so... I hope you all enjoyed it. Anyways, um, y'all take it easy. And I'll see you all on the flip side of the blade. Bye-bye now.